All right, uh, God of Thunder, you've got my attention. I'm not going to play with you, Pat. Right. <laughs> no way. It's because right. the, Easy, Dr. Love. <laughs> because success is bigger than jokes. All right, now. When you're the biggest, it doesn't matter what people say. All right, now, when Peter Chris left the band, he was quoted in a uh, an article, I think it was in Cream Magazine, it was called, Chris Says Hiss to Kiss, as saying, I don't want to be a 30-year-old rock star. Now, are you guys packing it in now because you don't want to be a 50-year-old rock star? Well, two things. When Peter was saying those things, he was a drug addict. <laughs> really? And that's why Peter and Ace uh, were let go or left the band. Okay. Since then, both Peter and Ace have straightened up. I'm proud of both of them. I'm proud to share the stage with them. And uh, what anybody says under the influence doesn't count. But regardless of that, if we would have felt good playing at 55 or 60, we, w we would do that. But... You know, if we were Tom Petty or Dave Matthews or anybody else on that stage that basically is there to play their music, you can have a potentially longer career, even though we're approaching our 30th year. What we do is backbreaking and physically exhausting because every step I take on that stage is eight inches above the ground on my platform heels. Right on. And uh, left arm, too. And we also carry, at least I do, another 55 pounds of studs, leather, armor, and uh, each dragon boot is 11 pounds apiece. Wow. So, you know, we what we do is much more physical, and because of that, you don't want to do it a day longer than when it looks convincing. After you get your star Hollywood Walk of Fame, after you get uh, told by Billboard magazine you're right behind the Beatles and a number of gold records by any groups in history, after Kiss Bubblegum Cards, comic books, Kiss movies, I mean, there's nothing left to do. I've got a Kiss um, Gene Simmons action figure right here in the studio. I got one too. Made by Todd McFarlane, uh -huh. the Spawn guy. Yeah. In fact, I've got a camera, a webcam right now. It's going all over the world, and people are looking at it. And I got to tell you, this thing, this thing is pretty mean looking. Did you guys design these? We had a hand in designing it. I was the one that approached Todd McFarlane about doing the comic books, Kiss Psycho Circus comic books, which are now up to issue twenty-six. Uh, and the action figures because I like his work. Right. And uh, we did have some input, but basically it was Todd McFarlane who put that together. And P.S. is a fourth edition coming, which is going to be the classic Alive versions, larger and, you know, more intricate. So there's tons of stuff coming, including a KISS theme park, which is being finalized with Universal Attractions, a KISS casino, and, you know, lots of other stuff, KISS uh, cartoon show. But the touring band should stop at its peak, and that's what we're doing. Are you going to play anything off Revenge in the, on the concert? I'm thinking if we're doing anything <laughs> off Domino, it, we, come on, Domino's a great song, isn't it? We may do it, but it's interesting when you meet a girl who calls herself Domino after the song and has her name tattooed on her body. That's uh -oh. very interesting. What is it that happens every damn time you open the door? It's the same damn thing, Gene. I, I, she bends over, I forget my name. Oh, exactly right. Now, in the 70s and the 80s, tell me this, this is funny. In the 70s and 80s, you guys were on the cover of uh, 16 Magazine and Tiger Beat, Hit Parader, and even like People Magazine, too. Now you're on the cover of Forbes and Playboy. Which is cooler? I would say Playboy is cooler. <laughs> Playboy is absolutely cooler than 16 Magazine. I would say, because when the girls grow up, look out. Heck yeah. Yeah, if that's, I would say it's cooler. The ultimate, uh, I mean, the ultimate uh, credible thing is that above and beyond music, above and beyond whether you sell records or not and stuff, is when you start to get into, under the skin of Americana in general, Forbes and Playboy have very little to do with music and guitar. So when you get on those covers, it says something bigger is going on. You're a huge, and, you're a huge deal. They're not, they're, they're not bad, as a matter of fact. So at the shows, everybody's been showing up. At the uh, yesterday's show, every wrestler came out. Uh, Randy Savage and, you know, all those guys and the NSYNC guys showed up. Mm. And, uh, just every show is what's happening. It's the show everybody wants to go see. Hell yeah, because, like you said, it's the last one. It's the last hurrah. I mean, you'll never tour again, but there will be other KISS endeavors that people can uh, take part in and uh, they can still experience KISS. But you've got to know that this is a huge disappointment for fans all over the world, right? I, I think it, it may be a disappointment. On the other hand, I'd like everybody to think of it as victorious because, I mean, look at us. We've, we've been dressing silly for almost 30 years, completely ignored fashion, we were not in fashion yesterday. We're not in fashion today. I promise you we're not going to be in fashion tomorrow. 
We've only we've always only stubbornly listened to our own hearts and to the fans. And maybe at the end of the day, if you're going to call it quits, you may as well celebrate winning on your own terms. So was there was there a point when you were putting on your makeup and you and you looked at yourself in the mirror and you said to yourself, "I'm a grown man and I'm dressed like a bat and I've got dragon shoes on. What the hell am I doing?" I think Santa Claus and Superman don't have that problem. I certainly don't either. Oh, there you go. Well, that's good to know. You uh, do, are, do you have a plan for what you're going to do to keep busy? I hope you've got some money saved up, Mister. I don't need a job. And like great athletes who retire and don't know how to do anything else, they put them in the broadcast booth. Are you going to like be producing now? Is that what you're going to do? You produced for a band called Keel a long time ago. Is that true? Yes. A long, long time ago. I did two records for Keel, two records for Black and Blue, a Wendy, Wendy o. Williams record, a Doro Pesh record. Uh, Black and Blue won the MTV basement tapes, uh, the first basement tapes that they ever did. I didn't know that. Do you remember that? They were, that's how they, uh, they they sprung to start them, right around the same time you guys were taking off your makeup on, uh, on, the, J on the J.J. Jackson show. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Yeah, those were the days, Gene. See, that's why you're in a position of power, because you know this stuff. I, I can't get my own country, though. I can't even get my own picture on the website for crying out loud. Gene, can you pull some strings for me, dude? I think you have to take your clothes off, my friend. <laughs> it's Bourbon Street. You're probably, uh, you're probably right. Now, you've done some acting. Are you going to do some more acting? I did some acting in my off time. Um, what was the name of the movie you did with Tom Selleck? Runaway. Runaway. And you're going, Ramsey, I've got your son, Ramsey, blah, you're, blah, Ramsey. You're, you're very good. But, you know, aside from the occasional here and there, Kiss really does take up most of our time. And, uh, you know, seriously, the main thing of this tour is to stand up on stage, hold our head up high, and thank everybody from the bottom of our hearts for making all our dreams come true. I mean, as starting off as a kid and seeing the Beatles on TV, and then when I'm ready to hang up my platform heels to be told that we're right behind the Beatles in the number of gold records in the group category is proof positive that the American dream is possible and anything you can imagine is possible. Right, you've actually been uh, been tied romantically to Cher, is that right? How does it feel to know that you and Sonny Bono had the same taste in women? I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. It's, it's a business. Right on. You've got and a pretty healthy if attitude. You if you don't treat it like that, usually the guy's going to be left with a, with a second butthole. So I'm just very clear about what it is that I want and what it is I will stand for, and uh, the idea that somebody can have dominion over me is never going to fly. The only person who ever had the right to ask me where I was going, what I was doing, was the one who gave me birth, and my mom cut that stuff out 30 years ago. When is it your time? When do you get your turn to live your life? Well, the problem with all marriages and relationships is you have to check with somebody if it's okay to, to be alive, right. and I will never do that. Right. I have some people in my studio who actually are experiencing some things kind of like that, Gene. And they're kind of giving it some thought right now. You mean, you mean the torture of relationships? The torture of relationships, Gene. Is that the uh, is that your uh, is that your inspiration for songwriting? Is that why you write things like Doctor Love and? God? Well, I've never I've never been tortured because I've never acquiesced, which is a big word saying bending over for the soap. Nobody will ever have the right to ask me where I'm going, who I'm doing, or what I'm doing. It's who, who wants to know. You're not afraid of anything, are you, Gene Simmons? Of course you are. We're afraid of death and failure and uh, basically not living up to my own, uh, I think, dreams. When I want to do something, I want to do it all the way. But again, I'm not really interested in whether or not anybody gets it, because let's be honest, when I originally started telling people and friends, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in a band and we're going to put makeup on, nah, it's never going to work. Right. Then when I told them we're going to take the makeup off and go on without makeup, nah, it's never going to work. Then I tell them I'm going to put the makeup back on and go back with Ace and Peter, nah, nobody's going to come. <laughs> You know, it's like if you sit around and, and tug on somebody's shirt sleeve and ask him if it's going to be okay, it's not going to fly. You've got to ignore everybody and blindly, wholeheartedly, without compromise, go full steam forward. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to if you're going to win, you'll win gloriously. If you lose, that's okay. You can get up and try it again. I think um, everyone should go out tonight or tomorrow or whenever they get a chance and rent um, a movie called Wanted, Dead or Alive just to see what happens to Gene Simmons' head at the end of that movie. That, that's incredible. I had a lot of fun watching that. And yeah, they, they gave me head. They gave, <laughs> is that what they call that? Uh, I'm back in L.A., yeah. All right. Uh, but let me ask you one question before you go, and this is, uh, this is a question a lot of people, uh, they, they bounce around, Kiss fans. Who had the best solo album? It really, uh, it really is up to people. Uh, uh, if, oh, I, I if I had to take a guess, I think probably Ace. 
Okay, that's fair but enough. By that, but by that point, he was long gone, sort of in the self-destructive mood, and it wasn't for another, another, wasn't for another fifteen years afterwards until he came out of it. But while he was doing his record, there's no question that he put his heart and soul into it. That's cool. I got to wrap things up here.